is applying tenacity to new grass. We just got grass to start growing through here. Going to hurt the new grass. We're going to lay some new seed over here where we really don't even have grass started. Hit that with tenacity. Is tenacity going to burn new sprouting grass? Is it going to burn the seed of the grass? We're growing a boy band grass here with, uh, you know, frosted tips. Okay, more updates to follow. Take a look at, will fertilizers, too much of them, uh, hurt the new seed as well? So we're going to take this area and we're going to start drawing up in quadrants. And we're going to have a control. Then we're going to have... Um, a couple different options of you know new seed existing seed four times the amount of tenacity on new grass and, and no grass at seed we're gonna do four times the amount of starter fertilizer and four times the amount of just your regular high nitrogen fertilizer all on a bed of Kentucky bluegrass which is arguably one of the harder grasses to grow. We got a big science experiment. I think it's gonna be fun. So the thing with chickens is, anytime I'd get ready to try to plant grass, uh, they'd just come over and re-till the area that I tilled. They'd eat all the grass seed and they'd just literally s till with their uh, talons and scratch and uh, make dirt baths. So this area has never really got the attention that, that it needed, that it should have. Now we don't have too many weeds growing in it, but it's not so much we're going to try to prove a herbicide can kill weeds. That I, I don't know if there's much value in a video like that. The value is going to come in is can you use a herbicide with either young grass or brand new grass? That's going to be the value. And then how much fertilizer is good and how much fertilizer is, well, just wasting your money? Or is it going to burn your grass? That's the value that we're going to try to get to. But first thing is, we're not going to touch this area. That already has a little bit of grass growing. Arguably, not much, but it's very young. This area, for whatever reason, just never got a, a good start and most of it has to do with watering or should I say the lack of me watering it. So we're going to seed bed prep this area. You're going to see me reseed it and then you're going to watch me hit it with uh, one round of herbicide that'll be two times the potency of uh, tenacity Tomorrow I'm going to come back, I'm going to hit it again with another 2x potency of tenacity and I'm not going to water it and I'm not going to wash it in. What I, what I will say, spoiler alert, is I'm not going to use a surfactant. I'm not worried about the herbicide sticking to the blades of grass. Let's get the uh, seed bed prep underway. Just, just gonna touch up the area here. You can see the girls are uh, itching to get in here. And that's why we had to put this uh, chicken fence down, chicken wire. Our application method, we're not gonna use a tractor. We're not gonna use an aerator. We're not going to use a mechanical spreader, a broadcast spreader. It's going to be the good old fashioned stick your hand in and let it sift through your fingers. This way has been done years and years and it'll work just fine for how we're going to do it. Take a rake, flip it upside down. That's it. And we're just going to do a little bit of this. 
And what this is going to do is get our seed to soil contact. Now when I hydro seed, how much seed to soil contact do I get? I'm going to say zero. When I cut the pack, I say I can get anywhere from a quarter to a half inch throughout the entire area. So really all I'm looking for is about a quarter inch of seed to soil contact. That's all we need. Be just fine. Even though this doesn't look like a big step, I promise you, seed to soil contact is one of, if not the, more critical items when it comes down to planting. It doesn't have to be much, but I promise you this is going to increase our yield quite a bit. Now we got a lot of thatch and everything else. This was, this entire job was a complete afterthought. But I thought we were just going to grow some grass in here, what grass could grow with the chickens. But I kind of want to see what does herbicide do to new grass. That's it. So we seed bed prepped it, and that was nothing more than a, you know, a, a landscape rake going down and roughing up the dirt. We spread the seed just by using our hand, making sure that we got you know somewhat of a uniform coverage. And then we provided the seed to soil contact by taking a rake, flipping it upside down. Now let's shoot the whole area with herbicide and let it and not just hit it with herbicide. We're going to hit it with two times the manufacturer's recommendation today. I'm going to come back tomorrow, hit it with the same concentration, the 2x, and that's going to give us a four times concentration dose. And I'm not going to water it. I, I'm not going to dilute it. This is a science experiment. Let's see how it goes. This is about impossible to uh, get a good shot on. Uh, hey, you're gonna have to take my word for it. I filled it up on the flat concrete patio exactly to the uh, two gallon mark. So we have a metered amount of water so far. Let's add the herbicide. Glasses for safety, for science. <laughs> okay. Uh, and what, what we are going to use is uh, tenacity. I, I think we all know tenacity. I think we're all you know somewhat familiar with it. Um, and, and I don't think we need to show tenacity, you know, killing weeds. Um, we're pretty sure tenacity can and does kill weeds just fine. We have exactly, hopefully I'm in frame, got uh, gallons of water, four in a two gallon container. Yeah, we're definitely doing a liberal application here. That's it, that's day one. We're gonna do nothing but overcook it with herbicide. And tomorrow, we're gonna cook it again with herbicide. And then we're gonna get into fertilizers and trying to do over the manufacturer's recommendation for two different types of uh, fertilizers and then we're gonna start dumping water on it and it's somewhere in the middle of July right now. It's hot, it's Kentucky bluegrass and I'll put a uh, link to uh, the specific uh, bluegrass somewhere right about here. <laughs> and we're gonna see what kind of grass we grow. Okay, day two, application number two. 
not much has changed uh, around here other than um, we didn't water. We let the uh, day one kind of sit in there. So now we're going to hit it with a, another, another round of the same stuff. Still the 2x potency. And that's kind of how we're going to get to, you know, well, 4x uh, potency. I don't see any yellowing of the leaves, of the blades of grass. We didn't have a whole lot of weeds in here to begin with. But the couple weeds, we just went over that and this one. Uh, honestly, not seeing a whole lot of change. Okay, come on, chicken. Get. Okay, well, day two update. Uh, sprayed it again with the uh, 2x potency of tenacity. Um, no real changes in uh, the grass. Uh, I'm not too worried about the weeds. What we're going to do differently today is we're going to add uh, two different fertilizers and we're going to start watering it. Let's see the results with that. Okay, our area is approximately 12 by 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Both fertilizers are close to being, you know, 50 pounds per uh, 10,000 square feet. The math comes out, we need about two pounds of each to cover the whole area. So one pound to cover half. What we're going to do is we're going to take a starter fertilizer, and this is kind of my go-to starter fertilizer, 112310 no herbicide and we're going to put two pounds on the whole area then half the area we're going to add one pound of this organic slow release nitrogen uh, 1818 so we're going to break out break everything up into four quadrants so before we put the fertilizer on Let's spray our area for all four quadrants so we'll know which side got, you know, all the, the different herbicides, the different uh, fertilizers and all that so we can keep it straight. So again, this side has some existing young grass. This side had about no grass. We did a soil or a seed bed prep with the rake and applied new seed. So we have existing young grass, no grass, just seed. So we're gonna split it right in the half through here. <clears throat> the bottom half, we're gonna hit it with a starter fertilizer and a nitrogen fertilizer. The top half is only gonna be the starter fertilizer. So we're gonna have four different quadrants going on uh, to see the different effects. All of it was treated with uh, two double in, uh, potency treatments of uh, herbicide. Oh, that's close enough. This would be close enough. Okay, now that we have our grid laid out, now that we have our seed, we have our existing grass, we have everything covered in two double doses of herbicide, now it's time to start uh, with our fertilizer. And as soon as we throw the fertilizer on it, I'm going to get uh, the sprinkler put on it, and we're going to shoot for, <coughs> excuse me, paint. Uh, we're going to shoot for two inches of water per week. That's a lot of water, but if we want this to actually get going and get growing, we need water, we need fertilizer, we need nitrogen. Let's do it.
that'll do it for the uh, organic uh, fertilizer. Now we're going to hit the whole area with uh, the starter fertilizer. We chose to do the organic on this side because it's downhill and if there's any water, runoff water, we didn't want leaching and affecting the uh, results. So the top half is literally just going to be starter fertilizer and the bottom is going to be the starter plus uh, the organic nitrogen. So what we got going on here is, is too much herbicide on young grass or seed grass dangerous? Followed up by, is too much fertilizer bad for grass? Because we just doubled it on this area. So will the nitrogen burn our grass? Well, we're gonna find out. Stick along, this is only day two. So day four, um, this side's really shooting up. This had, you know, some of the some of the grass already there. This is all the new seed. Um, I forgot to say one extra thing on the experiment. The side nearest the camera, <laughs> furthest away from me. The reason we went with the different fertilizer is because that one has iron, um, the element Fe in it. And there's a whole big rabbit hole that you, we can go down for weed control uh, with iron added to fertilizer. I'm not here to dispute herbicides. Um, we shot it pretty hard with uh, a, a herbicide, you know, four times manufacturer recommendation. We can see some whiting, some wilting of uh, some of the weeds that we have. We, we know we have herbicide, chemical herbicide. Uh, so we're not really trying to refute, debunk, or validate iron as a, <laughs> hard to say herbicide, it's an, it's an element, right? Um, so that, that was the, the difference with the other fertilizer uh, furthest away from me is not so much is is iron a herbicide is will it hurt new new grass and it really doesn't look there's uh, I see some new blades coming in over there um, this side's really really taking off uh, day four with heavy water these are the results well, the next day, I think this is day five, what do we see? You know, the area that had a little bit of growth coming in, the area that we hit it with the nitrogen, I don't know how well it's coming up on the camera, uh, but it's coming in a lot better than the area that we just did with starter fertilizer. Both of them are coming up all right. But definitely where the area where we hit it with the extra nitrogen fertilizer is really kicking the Kentucky bluegrass, you know, in, in, uh, into high gear. What we don't see is that extra iron really affecting yield or grass that we're, we're getting to, to sprout anyways. Really all, we, all I can tell is that it's, it's helping. Not, not going down the, the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, is, is it a weed block or not. This area, uh, the, the extra nitrogen doesn't really look like it helped start the seed. Uh, both of them are kind of blah for right now. Uh, it's just the tough time of year to really get Kentucky bluegrass to get going. Still too early to tell if the herbicide, the actual chemical herbicide, has, has uh, impacted the, the seed growth. I think the only thing that we can do is probably hit it again with a 2x concentrate of uh, tenacity and just keep trying to burn the seed and trying to, you know, 
some way, shape, or form prove or disprove that, you know, after multiple applications of two times concentrated per manufacturer's label, 2x concentrated tenacity, does or does not hurt new seed plantings. So, let's hit it again. <laughs> Okay, we hit it with a, another application of two times concentrated herbicide. We'll see where we go from here. Quick one week update. Uh, this side coming in real nice, just as expected. This side, slow, where we hit it with the organic uh, high nitrogen with uh, iron coming in just okay this area not seeing much i got a couple there there's a couple coming in uh but kentucky bluegrass uh, kbg is just you know a, a, a late bloomer that's not newsworthy so i'm not ready to call uh danger on <laughs> heavy amounts of herbicide uh, to the point, i probably going to keep the fence up through the winter to keep the uh, chickens off it because I think we've uh, eradicated it with a, a lot of chemicals. So not ready to call um, danger yet. Uh, truthfully, yesterday I only got to water this area once. Uh, life happened, so we got a little delinquent on our watering. But one week update, this is where we're at. Let's see uh, how the next week evolves. Day nine update. Um, not really much to show, but one kind of significant development has happened. We are growing white Kentucky blue grass. Kentucky blue grass that is coming in white. Uh, I've never, <laughs> never really seen that happen. So when, when you spray herbicides, you can get you know yellowing and wilting of uh, weeds. Um, I don't really know what to make of white Kentucky bluegrass. We do have some coming up in the other areas. Uh, predominantly, it was just where the the fresh seed was laid. So not much of an update, but. Uh, a strange one. I wanted to shoot it at the same angle. I'll bring you over to this side and give you a reverse angle and get you down close to uh, <laughs> and have you take a look at it because I, I uh, th this one stumped me. Kind of see what I'm talking about here? It's white Kentucky bluegrass. Well, we got some green stuff coming in, but uh, kind of odd, isn't it? We're growing a uh, boy band grass here with uh, you know frosted tips. Okay, more updates to follow. Day 15, uh, I wanted to get out here on day 14, exactly two weeks at, uh, after initial seeding and planting. Um, day 13, it really started to pop, uh, and I was really trying to get out here on day 14, and then life happened, and everyone had more things for me to do, and I just couldn't get there, and I'm, I'm sure you can relate. But day 15, one day after the two weeks, um, it's really starting to come in. It's looking good. 
I can about safely say that the fertilizer with iron decreased our yield and I'm gonna go out there and non-scientifically say 20% uh, between the two there's there's at least one-fifth less uh, germination and a lot of that uh, I attribute to the iron in it probably making the soil a little more acidic than what a seed wants we also don't have any weeds growing in there so there's a uh, you know maybe a balance that that's happening there if you don't have you know the risk of weeds this that another thing it's really showing me that just use the regular starter fertilizer with no iron no weed control no nothing like that um, and then use all the tenacity you want our white grass is starting to green up a little bit more uh, and, and it's bouncing back it doesn't look like it hurt the sprouting the the germination is is going pretty good over here on our control now we didn't put any new seed over this it's just what I seeded earlier let the chickens run in it we just use two different fertilizers I, I can't really tell a major difference between the two so I, I, I'd say you know if you're going to use some sort of an organic fertilizer with iron in it to combat weeds on younger grass that's already you know maybe at this stage uh, go for it it doesn't look like it helped or hurt much but on new grass I, I can definitely see a difference here day 15 we'll continue to keep going still day 15 just wanted to give you a quick different angle this is the one that got the second application or the additional application of uh, the organic fertilizer with iron this is just straight up starter fertilizer now they both got the same starter fertilizer again this one just had the added application of more fertilizer with iron may or may not be a weed block um, solution you draw your own conclusion so day 19 update this is kind of where I would expect you know three week old Kentucky bluegrass to be at, at this stage this plot had the um, si second fertilizer also with uh, iron in it it's come back and it is still coming back and growing in um, I still think it's about 15 to 20 percent behind the test plot that got no additional fertilizer only starter fertilizer um, you know we did use that other fertilizer in conjunction with the starter fertilizer I, I don't think it's any fair I don't think it would be fair to have one brand new seed laid down with starter fertilizer and something without uh, you, you know that the high phosphorus um, but when we add in an additional fertilizer that should only change with the additional iron that was kind of uh, the, the difference here our, between our two test plots over here that were not uh, reseeded again it was just lightly seeded and then while well, the backyard chickens went through it um, not much difference between the two uh, different fertilizers all of the area got you know six eight times the amount of herbicide that the manufacturer wants you to put on the area uh, we went from you know bleached white grass to now it's you know greening up a little but what we did notice is it didn't really hurt germination too much yeah there's some bare spots in there but you know Kentucky bluegrasses pretty hard to get established year two this will all 
come in, it, it'll all be just fine. Um, so I think I'm, with that, I'm gonna call the, this experiment done. Uh, it's, it's my personal opinion that just use a starter fertilizer. Make sure it doesn't have uh, additional herbicide, weed and feed. Just regular starter fertilizer. That's really all you need. And if you do got to use herbicide to kill off weeds, um, even if you goof up a little bit with tenacity and you, you double it or triple it, we went well past uh, triple and it, it didn't hurt it. Got a little weird with the white grass, but it didn't actually hurt our, our, our germination, our yield or anything. So that was our experiment. Um, hope you found it informative. This was all through Minnesota in July that you know we broke records on being hot and everything else, but water, 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 water. And uh, you can get Kentucky bluegrass to grow in the middle of July in uh, <laughs> record breaker, breaking heat. And if I can do it, you know you can do it too. Cheers from the Bulldog. Well, this is more of a 22-day update. 21-day um, uh, life got busy, and then when I had time to do a 21-day update, uh, it started raining, which coincidentally really greened up, well, everything. So here we are. Uh, this was with the iron. This is with just starter. Uh, all of it was sprayed with, uh, you know, multiple times over manufacturer recommendation of uh, tenacity. This, it, it's getting to be a toss-up. Um, the, the iron really came back. Um, do I think it hurt a little bit of the yield? I think it might have, but honestly, it's kind of a coin flip at this point. It, it seems to have all, you know, came back. And now we're, you know, four inches and we're pretty much ready to mow. And this is kind of what, uh, you know, a typical Kentucky bluegrass um, area would look like after, you know, a good three weeks of adequate watering. So this was our test plot. This over here never got overseeded or anything. It just kind of had some existing grass. Um, and now I'm pretty much thinking it's time to um, till over this and maybe do another uh, test plot. Who knows? More to come. But hey, if uh, you know stuff like this interested you, um, be sure to hit that subscribe button and we're going to be doing some more test plots and uh, testing different um, seed varieties. Uh, Try to test them to failure. See if, uh, you know, too much herbicide is, is a bad thing. See if too much fertilizer might be a bad thing. Test different fertilizers. Hey guys, remember, if the bulldog can do it, you can too. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Starter fertilizer only. Starter fertilizer and organic fertilizer with iron. 22 days after uh, seeding, is it a coin flip? You decide. Leave a comment down below.